Hi, I'm Daphne, the data drawing dragon. Today, I'll share one of my favorite graphs, the bar chart. Today, we'll use one of my favorite things, something kids usually like too, crayons. Let's start with a single crayon. What can we say about it? I could describe the color. This crayon is pink. I can see the height or how tall it is. This shows how much crayon we have left to use. If we add another crayon, now there are more observations we can make. Instead of one color, we have two pink, and teal. We can see the height of the first crayon and the height of the second crayon. We can also see the difference between the heights of the two crayons, and that can be a really useful thing. The teal crayon is taller. We have more of it left to use than we do of the pink crayon. This is easy to see because they are lined up at the same starting place. Our eyes are really good at comparisons like this. It's especially cool that you can do this not just with two crayons, but with many. How many crayons do you see here? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Even with seven crayons, it's easy to make comparisons. The teal and purple crayons are the tallest. The orange crayon is the smallest. We must use that one a lot. I can order the crayons from tallest to smallest. Looking at them is just like reading a graph known as a bar chart. Let's make it look a little more like an ordinary graph. I'll add a horizontal line on the bottom. This is the x-axis. Let's put a vertical line on the left. This is called the y-axis. That line is where the numbers on my graph will go. My tallest crayon is eight centimeters, so I'll count up to there and label by twos. Two, four, six, and eight. I'll add CM at the top. That stands for centimeters. Back on the horizontal x-axis, these are where my categories go. We're looking at colors, so I'll add the names. Purple, teal, blue, yellow, green, pink, and orange. I'll add a title to the x-axis, color of crayon. It's also a good idea to add a title to the overall graph that helps make it clear what we're showing. Amount of crayons left to use. In a more typical bar chart, instead of crayons, we'd use rectangles to show the values. I can take away the crayons and now we have a bar chart. Notice, it's just as easy now to see that the purple and teal crayons have the most left to use. In fact, looking at it this way in a graph, I can see there's a tiny bit more of purple to use compared to teal. And there's definitely the least left of orange. That's the kind of information we can learn from a bar chart, where there's more of something, where there's less, how the bars compare to each other, and how they compare to where we'd like them to be, or our goal. There are a few different types of bar charts, and they each have their own name. What you see here is probably the most common type of bar chart. Sometimes people call it a column chart because the bars look like columns. It's also sometimes referred to as a vertical bar chart. For another variety, imagine flipping this graph on its side so that the purple's at the top and the orange is at the bottom. That would look like this. When the bars go sideways, that's called a horizontal bar chart. You might also notice as I show the various examples how I made some changes to the words, where they are and what they say too. This is to help make sure it makes sense to someone else looking at my graph, like you. Let's flip back to that basic bar chart and look at one more variation. This graph shows the amount of crayons left to use. I'll move that title so it describes the bars that are currently there. I'll add an outline that shows the amount of crayon already used and label that too. I'll add a title that describes the graph, Crayon Use by Color. 
This graph shows our progress through each crayon. It's called a stacked bar chart. Back to those basic bars. If our goal is to use our whole box at the same rate, this dotted line shows that we should color more with the tall crayons. Those are where we have more than an average amount left. And we should avoid using orange until the other colors catch up. There you go. Those are the basics of bar charts. You can review what you've learned here and find more fun, including my featured activity, a downloadable worksheet on how to draw a bar chart, and you can even share your drawings with me at daphnedrawsdata.com slash bar charts for kids. Before I say goodbye, let's look at some example bar charts from my adventures. In the jungle, I drew a bar chart to help the monkeys find the banana thief. That stack of bananas? Those are just fancy bars. I used a stacked bar chart to help the aliens understand which spaceship had enough fuel to fly home. Only the yellow one had a fuel level above the line that showed the amount of fuel needed to go home. In the Arctic, I plotted the polar bear's plunge using an upside down bar chart. That's part of the fun of drawing data. Once you understand the basics, you can play. If a dragon can draw data, you can too. Thanks for watching and happy graphing.